Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how brute force laser jammers work. Uh, there's a number of different ways that laser jammers can operate, and this is gonna be one of them. Uh, if you haven't yet watched my video on how laser guns operate, uh, go ahead and watch that video first. It'll explain how laser guns operate, and then it'll make more sense how we're gonna turn around and jam them. So uh, let's take a look at brute force laser jammers. Uh, kind of a good classic example of a brute force laser jammer is gonna be the Light Attack LE-10. Uh, this was a laser jammer that was invented back in the 1990s. Uh, it was pretty effective for its time, and it was a very simple device. Here's how it worked. So basically it just said, do you see laser? Uh, if no, don't do anything. But if yes, fire, just blast laser back at the source. That's all it did. It was a very simple device. There wasn't a lot of brains or sophistication in it. Uh, there wasn't really even any filtering. It was just, if you see laser, fire back. That's it. So let's take a little bit more look now, a little bit closer level at kind of what it's doing and how it's doing that. So uh, here's the idea. Again, if you've watched my video on laser jammers and, uh, or laser guns, uh, the idea is it's gonna be sending a pulse, it's gonna be reflecting off the vehicle, and it's gonna come back and be received by the laser gun, right? Now, here's where things start to get a little bit different uh, with this laser jammer. So uh, let's take a look at the green and the blue pulses only first. Uh, the green pulses are gonna be the pulses transmitted from our laser gun. Those pulses are gonna go out to the vehicle, get reflected off the vehicle, and come back. Uh, the reflected pulses returning back are gonna be represented here by the blue pulses. So what we're looking at is transmitted, received. Transmitted, received. Transmitted, received. Now you'll see, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on here, all these red pulses, right? These red pulses are gonna be all of the jam pulses coming from the brute force laser jammer. Now, the way that it works is you'll see it's just gonna blast laser like crazy. It's just like machine gun firing laser pulses back at the laser jammer. And the laser gun is like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, I can't do anything. And it's out, you know? That's the idea with this laser jammer, really simple idea. And basically what happens is you've got your pulse that's uh, transmitting. Uh, at some point the vehicle and the laser jammer is gonna receive that pulse and then all of a sudden we're gonna have the original pulse traveling back to the laser gun plus all of these now uh, jamming pulses which just just keep firing back at it. So as soon as the first return pulse comes, everything else starts coming back too. Really, really simple. So. That's pretty much it. It's just designed to blast a ton of laser. It's not actually like constantly turned on like a flashlight. It's actually pulsing uh, these laser pulses like over and over and over to create the brute force jamming effect. Now, uh, let's take a look at kind of the power output. Uh, you would think at first glance like a brute force laser jammer that's blasting a ton of light would take a really high powered diode. Uh, now, it was something interesting. I looked up some of the specs on different types of diodes. Uh, check this out. Let's take a look at the power output of uh, the LE-10 versus a more popular, you know, more modern laser jammer like the Laser Interceptor. Uh, the LE-10 uses just a standard 13 watt laser diode, a gallium arsenide. Uh, the LI diode is actually a much more powerful diode. It's 115 watts as opposed to a 13 watt diode. It's uh, almost 10 times as powerful. Uh, if you haven't yet watched my video on how traditional laser jammers work, uh, you can watch that video as well and we'll talk about kind of uh, some of the smarter intelligence behind uh, figuring out how the LiDAR gun works and then how to jam it. So you can watch that video as well and it talks about how the LI works. Uh, in this case you're noticing we've got a brute force jammer which is outputting a lot of light but the diode is actually far less powerful than the LI diode. Very interesting, you wouldn't think that at first glance. Uh, in fact, there is even a high-powered version of the laser interceptor called the high-powered version, and uh, the idea was that it had a second diode in there, so not one, but two, and the reason was that uh, when a laser diode is firing, it's not actually a circular pulse that's coming back. It's actually slightly oval-shaped, and this oval shape looks like this. So what they could do is you have uh, one pulse, or one laser diode, which was kind of horizontally oriented, and another one which is vertically oriented, and those two combine to come together and to give you a bigger coverage area. Uh, that was the idea behind the two laser diodes here that they call the high-powered version. So it's more about the coverage, just making sure it's all covered, as opposed to uh, truly the power output. And that's actually one of the reasons why you'll see uh, the power, it's a less powerful diode than even what's used in like modern non-brute force jammers. So kind of interesting. Uh, another quick note, is the way that this worked. Um, when it comes to power output, you can either put out one big blast of LiDAR or a whole bunch of smaller blasts that, although each pulse individually is weaker, if you sum them up, they may, they may be the same power output as one uh, large blast. 
of LiDAR. And so the idea is it wasn't actually putting out a bunch of really bright pulses, but a bunch of weaker pulses only, look at that, 14 to 20 milliwatts. The, the diode is rated for 13. The LI is rated for 115. This, a milliwatt is one one thousandth of a watt. So again, much smaller pulses, a lot less power per pulse, but a lot more pulses. That was the key here to these brute force jammers. So you've got a whole bunch of these weaker, but yet still just overloading number of pulses to the point where the LiDAR gun is like, I can't do anything. That was the trick here. Now, pros and cons uh, as far as this system. Uh, it's a very, very simple algorithm, right? It's, do you see laser? Yes, fire! That's it. It doesn't take a very complicated or sophisticated algorithm to achieve this. Very simple device. Um, as such, because it was so simple, you don't have any firmware updates that are necessary. You just install it and it works. It just fires and it doesn't care about the pulse pattern of the laser gun that's shooting it. As long as it sees laser, it's just going to return this same style of brute force jammer. Uh, it's not actually changing its pulse pattern depending on the gun that's being shot with it. So you don't actually need any firmware updates to change the way the gun works. It's designed to kind of be future-proof in that second, in that sense. It just works against kind of all different laser guns. Very cool. Now, cons. Uh, putting out this much power like this uh, could actually potentially cause the laser diode to overheat and could shorten its lifespan. And so what they did was they set it up where it could only jam for a couple seconds and then it would turn itself off and it would need about a minute or so to recover and get back to the point where it could fire again so it doesn't uh, overexert the laser diode. Now they set it up for five seconds, which is fine because in practice, five seconds is generally plenty of time to slow down to the speed limit and you're gonna wanna turn your jammers off anyways and allow them to get a speed reading off of you. So although it's a con, it wasn't really that big of a deal in practice, but it is something to be aware of that it was a lot of power to be putting out through the diode. Now, another issue, this is a big one, it's not eye safe. Putting out that much power can be potentially damaging to the human eye. Uh, most of these uh, laser jammers are class one lasers. There's class two, uh, there's class three A. This was a class three B laser, which is really not that eye safe, especially without protection. Uh, they never even bothered going to the FCC to get certified as far as eye safety or anything, which is kind of interesting. So it's not particularly safe to the human eye and other people maybe shooting LiDAR guns. Uh, because this gun just put out so much light, it was not stealth. It was not in any way trying to hide the fact that it was a jammer. It was just blasting LiDAR, and as such, it would throw jam codes on a lot of different guns, so it was kind of obvious. Even if the human eye can't see infrared light, the gun would often still throw a jam code, whereas uh, with modern guns, you won't see that. They're modern jammers, rather. Now finally, uh, although it was designed to be future-proof, uh, some of the newest guns have figured out a way to work around it, and even if the LE-10 is firing, they can still get a punch through through that jammer. So the LE-10 is not actually effective against some of the newest guns. So uh, although it was designed to be future-proof, it's not totally future-proof in that sense. So there you go. There's a look at uh, the Light Attack LE-10 and kind of brute force laser jamming in general. So as you can see, uh, there's different ways of doing it, and it's not necessarily about having a really powerful diode. Uh, that can help. It'll allow you to put out more light, but that light is not necessarily the key to jamming. It's just a matter about either just confusing the laser gun, so, or yeah, the laser gun, so it doesn't know which pulses are valid, and just kind of throws up its hands and says, "All right, whatever." So that's how a brute force laser jammer works. Uh, if you want to see my video on how like traditional laser jammers work, like the LI, go ahead and click the video over here. Uh, if you want to see some of the other videos, radar, LiDAR, whatever, take a look at the video description. Uh, they'll all be posted down there. Uh, if you want to stay updated to additional videos, subscribe, like, continue as you wish. So, awesome. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.